All right, good people. Sci-Fi Express Lane. I had to put on my studio light because it's still dark out and, sh and stuff. So let me express myself. Um, I was talking to a sci-fi writer again. I'm not about this this slap hurt around the world stuff, but we was talking about uh, my story, uh, sci sci uh, cyberpunk streets, right? And um, he said, "Yeah, man. You know, where do you get your thoughts from? Your ideas from? And you know, that's what we need more black writers to do. And I'm all I'm all for that. You know, um, but." I think black writers, um, I'm gonna defend black writers in explaining myself, right? Because I'm a black writer. Um, I think we get our stories from the things that we are uncomfortable with in the world we live in, um, I guess, well, today, right? Um, we can't predict future uncomforts. But what we can see are things that we're slightly uncomfortable with um, and that we think may become bigger things and then fully make us fully uncomfortable, right? Um, so that that's something like that. So it can be a, a, a thing that will make us fully uncomfortable or it can be something that um, we think might... Uh, help us out and be better. Now, sci-fi, like most literary genres, don't always write about, oh, it's a beautiful day, it's gonna be a beautiful tomorrow, this is how I overcame this beautiful thing. Many times, it's, of course, it's an obstacle, and not too many obstacles are perceived as good until after you overcome them. When you're confronted with an obstacle, it doesn't seem good. It seems like, damn, this is the worst thing that's gonna happen to me Oh my God, why did God put this before me? God, please help me. Lord Jesus, baby, help me. Over, 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 right? Um, until after you overcome, you be like, wow, no pain, no gain. You overcame it. Sometimes you don't even remember what you went through um, or how you felt before you confronted it. But believe me, writing stories are the same way. It just seems like people don't want to read about I faced nothing tomorrow and I overcame it. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, let me how let me tell you how my day, how good my day was, please. You know, well, it didn't start off that good. Well, now you can talk. But if it did start off good, I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, oh shit, hit the brakes. Um anyway, that's what I think is 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 out. When you look at um, some of the big question um, sci-fi stories in mainstream sci-fi, right? And I've been very critical of the foundation. I've been very critical of Raised by Wolves. Um, I'm critical of, of Doom. Now I'm looking at um, this new one on my um, favorite video game, Halo, and I'm critical of that. And um, what I come back with is of course this is a lot of old sci-fi from the 70s not in regards to halo but halo is military sci-fi right military sci-fi is an old genre what these old sci-fi stories argue or write from is a uh, fear of something right um when you feel like you need to send um uh, embryos to another planet and have re robots raise them like they do in Raised by Wolves, um, you're saying that the world is not going to last. Let's speculate about having to continue humanity on another planet. If you're not worried about the world not lasting, it's hard for you to think of a story where the world would not last. Uh, if you're secure about life and the experience that we have here on life, you're not afraid of getting old, you're not afraid of dying, right? And you come from a culture of people that somewhat believe in the afterlife, right? And, and accept things as they are, you're not going to write a foundation, a story like 
the foundation because in the foundation you have to be uncomfortable with death you have to be uncomfortable with mortality and so these are things that the the the, the western writers probably are uncomfortable with and they'll argue oh my god who's not scared of dying oh my god who wouldn't want to live forever you know and i guess after the question is posed everybody can come up with an answer everybody might say you're right i never thought about it but we don't deal with why the person never thought about it in the first place now these are some very basic questions right but military sci-fi is hinged on war in space. It's hinged on warring aliens. It's hinged on uh, violent conflict being universal. If you don't come from a culture where violent conflict is um, dominant, it's hard for you to imagine that space would be a big battlefield. That's not something that you would think of. So again, what's your present day uncomforts dictate some of the things that you would imagine and the conflicts that you perceive having to um, um, deal with, you know what I'm saying? So um, what do you call it? When it comes to uh, Halo, these these stories that are bent on on war and, and 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 violence, you know, as much as I love the video game, the sci-fi of it is, you know, weird in the sense that yes, if you come from a culture that everything you think of or everything you've experienced and is shaped around borders, it's shaped around war, it's shaped around conflict and physical solutions to the conflicts, that's what you will presume will happen and imagine will happen, and it's probably imagining happening in space, it's a star war, it's a war of stars, <laughs> you understand? Um, so that's, you know, and I even argue that with, with 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 Star Trek, you know, many of the worlds they went to, many of the alien species that they 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 um, encountered were still very violent. If they weren't violent, they themselves, as the Star Trek crew, um, perceived their actions as violence, and they never checked themselves on that. Like one of my. Uh, favorite Star Trek episodes and I think they um, mimicked it in this Star Trek Discovery is when they run into this space whale that latches onto the ship and it's draining the ship of energy they first respond with phasers you know um, shock this fight this thing off and then it takes them a while to realize that it's a baby and that it's suckling energy from them because it it, it needs it to, to live and it, it, it looks at it like its mother. And then they find out where the rest of the space whales are and turn off their engines and then it goes to another space whale. I'm sorry, I spoiled it for you, but I don't know the name of it. Um, anyway, they never really check themselves and be like, damn, why did we assume this was um, you know, an attack. Why did we assume this was something violent? You know, um, and and I and I would assume. You know, I know if I assume somebody was going to be violent towards me, and it turns out that they weren't violent towards me, I would be like, damn, why? What's wrong with me? Why? Why I keep thinking everybody? You know what I'm saying? And other people would probably say the same thing. Like, dang, dude. All I did was say hello. You you act like you're from New York or something. You know. You always got your defenses up. Why? You so d defensive, son. Ain't nobody meet. You know, this is where all these terms come from. And 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 um, Star Trek and sci-fi is like that. So um, when when we think of black science fiction writers, um, especially appealing to a market that has been used to space aliens invasions, space wars, um, uncomfort 
with with life and mortality. You know what I'm saying? I'm scared of robots. All these things are the normal tropes. Um, it's hard for them who don't really have these same fears or probably introduced to these fears and opinions outside of their own mind when somebody poses the question and they're like, oh, it's hard for them to either write those stories or even write, um, counter those stories. Like one of my stories that people really like in Cyberfunk Streets um, is the story about the girl who gets the love robot. Now, that story is a response story. The story that it responded to was men getting a love robot and everything turning out all okay. Um, that's not a story that I thought of on my own. It's a response story. However, um, there's a lot of response stories that think they get credit for being thinking outside the box. And they are outside the box. They're counter to what the story's normal trope is. Like if you write friendly aliens coming here to help us, that's, oh, that's brilliant. But it's really a response to mean aliens coming here to harm us. You know what I'm saying? Which is everywhere. So if you don't think of aliens really at all, right? It's hard to think of the opposite to that either. Um, let me explain that a little bit better because I don't think I made my point. Um, when we think of the tropes in early sci-fi, most of those tropes were written by men, old, which are now old white men, right? The great science fiction writers. However, a lot of today's award winners and counter um, writers are black women, right? Damn. I don't know why my phone keeps switching, but I'm gonna have to talk to my cameraman. But anyway, women in general, right? And um, they naturally see things from a female perspective, which is naturally a counter perspective. So in reality, a lot of those stories are response stories to those years of, of, of Western uh, male, white male writers, you know? And um, when it comes to black male writers, or even black women that write from a black only perspective and not a female and black perspective, sometimes those stories don't really seem um, far-reaching and extra imaginative. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, they seem different because we're different, but they don't seem as far-reaching and imaginative as a foundation or as a, um, a, a raised by wolves. Ooh, you know, um, even Dune, right? It seems far reaching. So, um, you know, the technology is there. Um, everything seems just so futuristic. So I don't know. I know with me, how I achieved that with Cyberfunk Streets and even with my um, Boss Ladies Planet, um, I went through the robots is a different type of robot. You know, use them almost like um, uh, counter to Blade Runner. And then, um, for the cyberpunk streets, I just use black relationship issues and tried to make it appealing there. So I found my um, own access. So I don't know. I know there's frustration with what's going on and that's what caused Mary Shelley to write uh, Frankenstein. She was like, y'all keep trying to clone people and bring people back from the dead. You're trying to be God, it's gonna go bad. So she wrote it as a warning. Um, so there's that, you know, we've got black warning stories, um, but sometimes black people don't warn science, black people don't warn the world, they just fall back and be like, that's white people doing that, I don't know, that's me guessing, um, I try to be cautionary, right, um, and I'm going to be more cautionary, I am an African American, so there's a part of me that, you know, accepts science as the future, um, and but there's also a part of me 
that says Frankenstein, you know, guy, Dr. Frankenstein, you stupid, you know. Um, but a lot of times, like I was talking to a, a co worker yesterday, and he was like, Yeah, they're cloning people, you know, they already doing it. And sometimes we just throw our hands up in the air and be like, Yo, that's what they want to do. And we don't feel we can tell them, Don't do it. We just say, They already doing it, you know, it's the man, it's the white man, blah, 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 blah. So, anyway, um, I just want to throw that out. Uh, these don't always have the final word. These are sometimes just me expressing myself to just get a thought off the, off the top of my head. If you watch this blog, you know, um, enjoy it, take inspiration from it, and let's move on. Um, I haven't said it in a while, but I encourage you to like, share, and comment. I need likes. I'm trying to get up to a thousand so I can go live. And then, um, comments, you know, suggestions, feedback. Let's make this two-way. All right, I'm out of here.